welcome to Renews, where we bring you renewable energy news on a weekly basis. This is the breaking news out of the oil and gas sector. Royal Dutch Shell, or in short Shell, has been ordered to enhance their climate target and Total changes its name to Total Energies, aiming to reach carbon neutrality by investing in more renewable energy. Investments from oil and gas industries in clean energy raise over the years. We see here the development of clean energy investments of 13 major oil and gas companies between 2015 and the estimated amount of capital expenditure in 2021. During this period, we see a general upward trend, resulting in an expected investment amount of 4.6 billion US dollars in 2021, which would represent a triple growth within somewhere around half a decade. The displayed 4.6 billion US dollars of these sample firms represent 4.2 percentage of their total investment volume in 2021. Beyond this oil and gas sector, the total global investment in clean energy technologies and efficiency is expected to be 750 billion US dollars in 2021. This is stated in the International Energy's latest investment report of June 2021. They claimed that this remains far below the requirements to reach the 1.5 targets. Let's have a closer look at two representative oil and gas companies who recently changed their climate strategies. Shell and Total Energies. These were not included in the previously shown charts. The oil and gas giant Shell targets a 25% share of investment on clean energy capital expenditure by 2025. They have been increasingly investing in renewable energy since 2016. For example, they acquired the French floating wind developer ELFI in 2019 and in 2020 they partnered with Ineco to build an offshore wind park in the Netherlands. The other big oil company, Total, recently changed its name to Total Energies and announced that 20% of its planned investment of 2021 will go to renewables and electricity which will be about the amount, the total of 2.5 billion US dollars. Since 2016, they expanded their investments in renewable energy and have increased their gross renewable capacity tenfold from then to 2019. To give some examples of acquisitions in 2020, Total Energies bought the company Global Wind Power France with one gigawatt of onshore wind capacity. And they also recently bought a stake in Hisetco, which operates a fleet of hydrogen taxis in Paris. Similar to the assessment of International Energy Agency, the efforts of Shell has also been criticized by the Dutch court. The court ordered Shell to enhance their climate targets. The multinational oil and gas company has to reduce its greenhouse gas emissions by 45% by 2030 compared to the emissions in 2019. Shell previously made climate targets were aiming to achieve net zero in 2050 by working towards multiple short-term targets. Starting with the emission of 79 grams of carbon dioxide equivalent per megajoule in the base year 2016, these percentual drops aimed to lower the carbon intensity. The initially targeted carbon intensity reduction was the following. 6% reduction by 2023, 20% by 2030, 45% by 2035, and finally 100% by 2050. The Dutch court in Den Haag criticized that Shell's target could still allow the company to grow its absolute emission because their goal focused on the carbon intensity rather than the absolute greenhouse emissions. The court said that the climate strategy which Shell has previously made was not concrete and is full of conditions and that the conclusion of the court is therefore that Shell is in danger of violating its obligation to reduce its carbon footprints. 
Now the court ordered Shell to lower its absolute emissions and to use the baseline of 2019 instead of lowering its carbon intensity based on 2016. The multinational oil and gas company has to reduce its greenhouse gas emission by 45% by 2030, based on the emissions of the newly proposed base year in 2019. The lawsuit was filed by seven environmentalist groups, including Greenpeace and Friends of the Earth Netherlands. This is what some representatives had to say after the verdict. Donald Pulse said, It is historic. It is the first time a court has decided that a major polluter has to cut its emission. And Tom Cumin said, This is arguably the most significant climate change related judgment yet, which emphasizes that companies and not only governments may be the target of strategic litigation which seeks to drive changes in behavior. And this is Shell's response to the climate case verdict. We are investing in billions of dollars in low carbon energy, including electric vehicle charging, hydrogen, renewables and biofuels. And we will continue to focus on these efforts and fully expect to appeal today's disappointing court decision. Let's move on to the recent news of Total Energies. Total changed its name and logo to Total Energies and want to invest more in renewable energy, electromobility and hydrogen. Their new name is designed to illustrate all the energy sources on which Total Energy focuses. Oil, gas, hydrogen, biomass, wind and solar power. Total Energies also plans on working more on batteries and e-mobility and plans to install 150,000 electric charging stations. Their goal is to reduce their non-renewable energy sources, like petroleum products, which represented 55% of their sales in 2019. In 2030, they want these to only represent 35% of their energy sales to consumers. In that same year, Total Energies wants to be among the top five renewable energy companies and reach the installed renewable capacity of 100 gigawatts. The last update of their installed renewable capacity was 7 gigawatts at the end of 2020. They also want to achieve their target by investing 60 billion euros over the next 10 years in renewable energy. Total Energies plans to lower its greenhouse gas emissions of scope 1 and 2 by 40% in 2030 compared to 2015. This means they want to lower their 46 million tons of carbon dioxide equivalent in 2015 to about 25 at 30 in 2030. This road should evolve in net zero by 2050. Due to the focus on the scope 1 and 2 emissions, this development is only partially comparable to the target of Shell, which also includes scope 3. Reactions in the renewable energy world are mixed. About 90% of the shareholders backed Total's climate strategy, but some other investors and non-governmental organizations spoke out against it. Bruce Goodby said, the challenge is there is just not sufficient evidence it's aligned with the Paris goals. Lucy Pinson said, Big fossil fuel companies, including Total, are using greenwashing to distract the public from the harm their products cause to people and planet. And this is what Total Energy's CEO Patrick Puyan had to say about this change himself. This outcome is, I think, the best response to what commentators who predicted and in some cases even hoped for an investor rebellion against the company and response to those who act more as activists than as shareholders. One burning question remains. Why do more and more blue ships in the oil industry and beyond want to lower their greenhouse gas emissions? Well, there is increasing pressure from stakeholders, such as investors, customers and governments. Customers are concerned about the climate change. Governments have to meet the Paris Agreement targets. 
and the investors, they have to follow international regulations, such as the EU taxonomy, which Stefan will discuss in our next news section called Renewable Energy Policies and Sustainability. So next week, my colleague Stefan Hund will talk about the latest update of the EU taxonomy implementations. Please subscribe to Tinkery to stay up to date. You can find us on LinkedIn, on Instagram, on Facebook and on YouTube. We wish you an electrifying day. Stay tuned. Bye-bye.